2024 saw innovation from many AI large language models, but Alphabet CEO Sundar Pichai said at DealBook earlier this month that he expects progress to get more challenging. Joining us right now on the AI landscape as we close out the year is Henry Adger. He's a founder of AI consulting company Laden Space Advisors, uh, advises Adobe and the World Economic Forum. He's also a former member of the Partnership on AI. Are you of a believer that there's a quote-unquote wall? Uh, Sam Altman says there isn't. Um, I would say Pachai didn't say that there was. He just said it was going to get tougher. Yeah, I think that this is obviously a hot topic right now after a year of some pretty huge developments, um, particularly with large language models. Um, I think this scaling problem, as it's referred to, you know, the real movements we've seen with AI over the last couple of years have really come from this kind of brute force approach of using huge amounts of compute and huge amounts of data to really drive these models forward. And what we're seeing is, you know, some slowdowns, yes, in, in computation, um, although that's less uh, pressing, certainly still issues around energy and energy um, for data centers and for powering that compute. But I think data is a real problem here. I mean, we have a finite amount of data in terms of the Internet, in terms of the amount of places where we can source live fresh data. And I think that is becoming an increasing challenge, particularly as we start to see legal issues around how companies are obtaining and using data become more and more prominent. So I'm not necessarily of the opinion that we're going to see a complete halt to any progress, for sure. I think I'm probably closer to Pichai's perspective there. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's clear that in this year, which has been huge for some really big jumps, I think 2025 probably will be a bit slower. And when you think about the, the next component part of this, if you think the data is uh, in in short supply, the next generation of this is what they call synthetic data, which is effectively computers making up new data. Can that data ever be the same kind of quality data that would be quote unquote original? Yeah, so this is one of the big questions around synthetic data. So as you said, this is using AI to generate data, which then can be trained um, or used to train novel models or new models. Um, there has been some real promise shown in this space. There are some companies um, like Gretel that are really powering this forward as well. Um, but then there are also some meaningful concerns about what's called AI model collapse, which is when synthetic training data or AI generated training data actually corrupts the models that it then is used to train. Um, and we've seen this particularly in the uh, audio visual space. Um, some indications that this also would occur in the large language model text-based space too. Um, it's a bit too early to say, I think, if this is something which is going to fundamentally kind of shape the future of how these models are trained. Um, again, certain applications, we're seeing some, some limited success. Um, but again, if you're talking about these really large models that just right. require a huge amount of data, it's, um, it's less clear at the moment. In terms of investment, though, chips obviously <coughs> are the game. Infrastructure is the game. Are the mm -hmm. models themselves the game? So OpenAI now valued at $157 billion. You have Claude inside of Anthropic. You obviously have uh, Google, which just came out with its new Gemini uh, last week. Um, you have Amazon now with its own model. Do those models unto themselves have extraordinary value, or do you think that those, the models themselves become almost commoditized? Yeah, it's a good question. So I think you're absolutely right. We're seeing everyone coming out, particularly in the big tech sphere, but also with some challenger startups coming out with their own kinds of language models. And we see leaderboards for how these models operate in terms of reliability and, and success, you know, changing weekly, if not daily in some cases, in terms of which is at the top, who's kind of challenging for the title of the best. Um, and some of these models do have meaningful differences in what they excel at, right? So we have some like, for example, uh, OpenAI's um, O1, which is very good for reasoning, other models which are much better at more generalized tasks. Um, I think we're going to start to see perhaps certain models becoming more commoditized. And certainly when you look at, for example, Meta's approach with open source, the idea really is to get these models into the hands of as many people and developers as possible to build the foundations. Um, but at the same time, I think there are going to be some models that really do excel in specific areas. That means that that will be a key point and cornerstone of value for those organizations. It really depends, again, how quickly and how much more we can push the architectures that underlie these current models and how much we're waiting for a kind of a technical breakthrough to power a new wave, which maybe beat some of the challenges we see around alignment, hallucinations or error generation and things like this. But um, certainly, I think we're seeing some models moving towards that, okay. towards that more commoditized perspective.